politics. Uh, what what politics are being played here? The way, I, the way Speaker Houston describes it, it's a it's a funding dispute more than any than any dispute over whether the bill should be enacted or not, or whether the bonuses should be enacted. I think every funding dispute at bottom is a priorities uh, dispute. And the question is whether we are going to, in our generation, renew the tradition of Ohio, long story tradition, one that the Senate uh, understood and respected here, uh, of putting on the ballot the opportunity for the voters to have the say. Not the House, not the Senate, but ultimately the voters to have the say. If they did not want to recognize our veterans with this bonus and their families, that's up to the voters of Ohio. I have full confidence if the voters simply can have their say, they will emphatically approve this measure. We simply want the voters to have the opportunity in this generation to honor our veterans as they have the last previous four generations. That's all we ask, and that's all we're seeking, and it's what we are determined to see done uh, if the House of Representatives is changed this November. What's the uh, sum total cost of this? Uh, the uh, projected total uh, with a large cushion is about $200 million, which would be spread over a period of years through a bond issuance the same way this has been done four consecutive times by previous legislatures uh, and previous voters of the state of Ohio. The actual out-of-pocket cost probably is going to be considerably less than that, depending on the duration of proceedings. It may be as low as $120, $130 million, uh, but we were authorizing a bond transaction up to $200 uh, million. Speaker says he's going to pass this in November. He's going, to, he's going to do it with existing revenues, either something in the budget or perhaps rainy day funds. Would you support that approach? We, we think that the preferable way to proceed is the way that Ohio's legislatures uh, four times and almost unanimous votes in both chambers each time. So that's eight different legislative houses from World War I, World War II, Korea, Vietnam have considered this measure nine now if you consider the Ohio Senate this year. Uh, they have felt that a bond transaction is the cheapest way for the state to finance a service bonus. It is, in fact, the cheapest way because we have the lowest cost financing of state state government when we do a bond transaction. We're getting interest rates in the 2 to 3% range. Uh, and it is also a, a way to spread the cost over time rather than taking the hit to the budget this year when actually it's a tough time for the budget. If Democrats regain control of the House next year, uh, would you try to push, I guess the question is, why would you still try to make it a ballot measure instead of just doing it legislatively? Is that because of the, the bond issue? Is? Again, everybody who has looked at this issue going back several generations, many legislative leaders, many governors, many officials, they've always uh, felt that a bond transaction is the wisest way to do this for two reasons, again, because it is the cheapest source of money for the state and it spreads the cost over time. Uh, we think that that's appropriate. The state actually uh, has reduced its outstanding bond obligations in this past year because of the tobacco bond transaction that we did, which took pressure off the debt ceiling in Ohio. So if there ever were time to be concerned about bond financing, this is not the time. Interest rates are low. This is the smartest way to do it, and it is the most responsible way for the taxpayers of the state. The speaker says this is a choice between putting on a credit card and paying for it as you go. Uh, he says, considering that the way things are going in Washington and around the nation with the credit problems, why would we want to borrow to do this? It depends on your credit card. If you're talking about a 20% interest rate card, I think that would not be smart. If you're talking about a credit card that can get you 2 2.5% interest, which is essentially what we're running on state bond transactions these days, uh, that's a lot cheaper than trying to drag down the rainy day fund, uh, where our return on investments is above that level. So again, uh, we can talk about the financing mechanisms. Uh, I think, and again, we're building on a tradition that's been uh, reflected in generations of an approach to the same issue, uh, that this would be the most sensible way to finance it. Uh, but it, again, it comes down to a bottom line question of priorities. Are we going to provide this bonus to our veterans or not? Are we going to continue to wrangle over it in the political realm? Or are we going to put it before the voters and give them a clean opportunity to vote? The other thing I would say, by the way, about that approach is uh, if it deprives the voters of a vote, then it diminishes in some sense the value of the proposal. Because one of the things that I heard from veterans of the Vietnam War in particular was it wasn't so much the bonus. Uh, you know, it was money. It certainly helped. They come back and they're often strapped and their families are strapped. They're glad to have the bonus.
class. But it also meant something to them in the politics of that era, where people were very divided over the war, to have a statewide vote where, despite the controversy over the policy of the war, they felt that they were emphatically reaffirmed that the voters of the state supported their service, honored their service, and respected their service. If we don't have a statewide vote, then in our generation, we're not getting the full, uh, the full meaning of the civic engagement and the reaffir reaffirmation of what our veterans do for us. And we think that we're entitled to a statewide vote, again, reaffirming the tradition that has four times preceded us in Ohio. Average person on the street's been hearing all this news about uh, spending cuts at the state level. How do you explain this to them as far as how can you come up for money with money for this but have to cut other things? It's the same thing as with the jobs package. There are short-term priorities and there are longer-term priorities. Uh, this is a longer-term priority. It's renewing Ohio's traditions. I'm sure that there have been budget ups and downs in the previous eras where they considered this, but they made it a priority. We can certainly do that again now. Uh, but, you know, the budget will go up and down. Uh, we're having a tough time now. We're having cuts in my office. We're having cuts in state government. But a 10-year spreading of this makes it uh, of minimal cost year in, year out. And that's the proper way to go. Uh, and again, funding is always one level. Beneath that is a question of priorities. Can any of the candidates